Remember the Dwyer meter? Yeah, I checked it last night. It's good to go. Are we uh, up on radios and batteries? Squared away on those. All right, uh, what we got for a landing formation? Let me uh, see. They're going to be coming in and trail. they got five hawks. Okay, I'm seat number three, Bishop. On the PIC, I'll be in the right front seat. Captain Bryant's the co-pilot. He'll be in the left seat. Survival kit. It has instructions on it on how to use it. Just pull it out of his pocket. We have uh, three first aid kits on the backs of the pilot seats, two fire extinguishers on board for safety equipment. There is a crash axe to use in case you need to bang your way out of the aircraft. Okay, switch is on, switch is on, gun one check off. Cargo posted, road blaze check clear and on time, and you can start. Okay, one on one. Blaze clear, one's clear. Okay, come on, one on one. TV blades are moving. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, passenger secure. We're going right now. a couple seconds uh, I, I don't know if it can really be explained it's uh, it happens so fast you go out and you hope that your parachute opens that's that's the first thing it's uh, no feeling like you know you never have in the world it's, it's real quiet up there and it's just you once you're on the ground though the adrenaline is just phenomenal and uh, it just saps everything that you have. If I was on a train or a bus or a plane and, and sitting there and someone looked over at me and, and told me that uh, he didn't believe in war and asked me you know, what I thought about it, asked me if I was a warmonger, I'd say I don't believe in war either. I think war is, is nonsense, but I guess it's inevitable. War's been around ever since man's been around, so and you've got to be able to prepare for it. I would hope that we never have to use this technology. I'd be scared if we did use it. I, I don't look forward to packing all my gear and, and saying goodbye to my wife and family and not know whether I'm going to return. Uh, I don't look forward to that at all. But there's always the question in the back of my mind, you know, am I better than the other guy? But I, I hope we never have to find out. Depending on who you read, as to whether uh, warriors really want war. But I think any thinking military man today, uh, at least certainly I, never want to go to war again. I've, I've been there, and I don't ever want to go again. I've got two young sons and a family, and, and I don't want to go to war. Um, but my job, my profession, my calling, is to do that if I'm ever told to do so. And again, my calling and my responsibility and my mission is first to the nation to go do that which I'm told to do if, if, if ever I'm told to do that. My second responsibility is to the soldiers, to make sure that if I ever have to take them to war, that they are as tough as I can make them, that they are as disciplined as I can make them, that they are as well-trained and as skilled in the profession of arms as I can make them, so that if we have to go to war, I can ensure that they can go and do their job and I can bring as many of them home as possible. One, two, three, four, here we go. Here we go. All the way. All the way. Here we go. Here we go. Every day. Every day. 
Pick them up, pick them up, put them down, put them down, beat the ground, beat the ground. Many people say, you know, well, why do you have to be so tough in peacetime? You know, uh, if you ever go to war, war will toughen them up. I personally feel that any military person, no matter what rank he is, if he is in charge of other human beings and he thinks that way, he is a potential murderer. Because our job is to make sure that these soldiers are trained to the very best of our ability every day in such a way that we can bring the maximum number on them home. Hold. 7 a.m., Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Home to the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. The troops are training, like American soldiers everywhere. An ordinary day, except for one thing. These soldiers are part of America's rapid deployment force. In the event of an emergency, these troops are supposed to be able to pack up all their gear, leave their post in 18 hours, and go anywhere in the world to deal with any type of threat. Sometime during the next 12 hours, though they don't know it yet, they will be tested by an arduous and demanding alert that will not only challenge them, but also the entire concept of rapid deployment. First obstacle that we have here is the confidence climb. All right, what we'll do is as we go through every obstacle, I will have an individual demonstrate. Okay, Corporal Neal will demonstrate the confidence climb. Corporal Neal. Hey, assault, Sergeant! Demonstrate. Basically, all you do is just climb up until you get to the top, then you come back down on the opposite side. Oh, 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 oh. That's scary. That's scary. Looking good. That's up, Sergeant. All right, get up. Get up. All right, next two on up. Let's go. Pull up, Tyler. Pull up. Don't look down. Throw your leg up over. Don't look down, Tyler. Come on, Tyler. Confident. There you go. There you go. Confident. All right. It's just like jumping out of air, uh, aircraft, right? Um, when I went through uh, jump school, I was actually really scared. You know, I thought I was going to really die, you know, but I had this girl that went through airborne training with me, and she went out before I did. And I said to myself, now, if this lady can go out this plane, regardless how scared I am, I'm going out too. And I found out that you can overcome fear by just training. And I just like, I just like a job where uh, men that think they can't do something, that really end up doing it and be proud. Hold on, Tyler, hold on, there you go. Hold on now. There you go, get up on top of it. There you go. Now reach up and grab that cable right up behind you. Grab it above you. Grab that cable right there. No, the one on the pole. Come on, you can't, you can't grab them. They're, they're so high up, I can't grab them. Too short. Take it back, The way I deal with those soldiers is, is, first of all, one of the biggest things that the soldiers hate, whether they first come in the Army or if they've been in the Army for a while, is they hate to be treated like babies. And that's the picture of everybody that think that, OK, the sergeant, he is the hardcore guy. He is that tough guy and everybody is treated like a bunch of babies. Yeah, well, there's so school ain't that hard. Make it. This is that hard. Now you got confidence, Tyler, right? <laughs> you know you can do it. Now you can do it again, right? Put that chest sticking out. Put that chest in. <laughs> hey, Tyler. Good job, bud. <coughs> Tyler. Sergeant Chuck says a superb soldier. He's an outstanding leader. Uh, he's very compassionate and caring about his men, but at the same time, he has those high standards, and he makes sure that those standards are enforced because it's the enforcement of those standards that ensures that the men do things that they're supposed to do automatically, and that's what keeps them alive in a combat situation. Come on, Dave, get up that rope, Dave, get up that rope. You hardcore. No, I can't climb ropes. You better not come down that rope. I can't climb rope, Corporal. Knock out 10 push up. I don't have wrist strength. I have no wrist. Knock out 10 push up. One, two, three, four. Sound off, sound off. Set, go, go, go. Hey, nine, ten. Our young officers and NCOs. People say that they're just robots and they're not very smart and so forth and so on. But the big difference in them is that they're dealing in human life. 
you can do the rope like that. Right? I do that. I still so you can, can, you, can, you, can, you can go, you know, like that, right? Hey, um, can I jump up there? Come on, try it. You can do it. You can do it. Try it. I've tried, Corporal. You was all the way to the top. And then I've still got to be able to climb down that one. Whoa! We talk about the tremendous decisions that corporate leaders make. But they're dealing in money and things. We're dealing in human beings. And that's a very, very awesome responsibility. Try it. Put it in your head. You can do it. Confident. See how I'm doing? There you go. See? Come on. There you go. Come on. Just pull. There you go. Pull around. Pull. There you go. Come on. You got it. Come on. You can do it. Hold it. Hold it right with your feet. Put your heel right there. I've got all this. Put your heel right there. There you go. James, pull up there. Pull on up there. Pull. Pull. Step on my shoulder. I feel a little compassion for him, but this guy has got to go through it. In words, we don't say, okay, you don't want to go through it, you don't have to go through it. Our job is to motivate that individual soldier, and yeah, we feel a little sorry for him, compassionate for him, but we try to get him to go through it. Come on, James. Come on. So start climbing on up. Hey, James. James. You're going to have the rope. There's no problem coming down, okay? James. James. Hey, shit, you can do it. Come on, James. Is that close enough? Yeah. Yeah. Right, let him get down. I can't hold this rope all day, man. Come on, get on the rope. I can get down. I'll get down. Come on, James. You got it. Okay, James. Come on. Swing one out there. You ain't going nowhere. Just swing out. Swing out. Come on. Swing. Knock your foot around the rope. There you go. There you go. Now, come on. Slide on down. Slide on down. Come on, down that rope. Come on, down. 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 You almost, you almost to the ground. Come on down here. Come on down. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Good. Yeah, so. Look at that. Confident. Now you can do it again, right, James? You're not right this man. <laughs> no, turkey looks pretty good stuff. Anybody yeah. got any cheese? You can eat that yeah, stuff? Oh, yeah. For sure. It's, it's better heated up. Of course, anything is. But... This is a packet with all the little extras in it, your matches, your gum, toilet paper. This got peanut butter in it. Got your candy, crackers. Have apricots, all right. Trading commodity around here. And then here's your meal. And you just make you a little stove out of an empty can. You just uh, cut off one of the top parts and you cut out the sides. You bend it in like so, like that, and set it down here on the ground. I got a whole box in here. Uh, We're just gonna stay out here. And whatever you're going to uh, heat up, you open it up, set it right on top. What for the SQ2? Pretty hot. For the tree? You got your hot meal. Works out pretty good. Makes the difference. You, 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 you get so you look forward to it. You get so you can look forward to it. just sitting down, relaxing, getting something to eat. You get the your, your guy just out of high school who's lived with mommy all his life, you know, and, and mommy's made his bed and cooked his meals and washed his clothes, and, you know, he, she's done everything for him. She's got him out of bed to get him ready to go to school. And once you get to the Army, it's a totally different way of life. You're responsible for yourself. You're responsible for making sure that your bed's made. <clears throat> You're responsible for making sure that you get the chow, and if you don't get the chow, it's a lick on you. And uh, making sure your your, uh, your your uniforms are ready to go. And it's just a, again, that's discipline, self-discipline. If you're the nice guy all the time, and then you have to tell somebody to do something they really don't want to do, they might tell you, no, I'm not going to do it. But if you have worked with that person, and you've given him easy jobs, and you've given him hard jobs, but you've, you've kept a distance in a lot of cases, because you know that sometime, you're going to have to tell him to do something he doesn't want to. You may have to put him in a situation where he may lose his life. And you don't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. But you've built that bond through the common discipline and the common experiences that uh, is going to cause him to go ahead and do it anyway because, because he loves you, no, because he respects you, because he knows that you're a professional. The, the training here is, is complete. See how easy that stuff is? If you learn it all and you remember it all, you're ready. I should see you back home now, Jones. I yeah. need to be able to recognize you. So you know what you're doing, right? You got to chop it. Yeah, just hustle. How far you going to go out? 20 yards, all right? 25 meters. 25 meters. Go back up off the tail rotor again. 
Okay, rest. Come on, y'all. Come over here and get five meters in between each other. Five meters spread it out. You get into the birds. Put your seat belts on. Place the muzzle of your weapon down on the floor and the weapon between your legs. Okay. The first thing to do is get that seat belt tied and then put your weapon muzzle down on the floor. First time on a helicopter, a lot of these guys are terrified, scared to death. They don't know what the guy in the front seat's been doing. They don't know his expertise. I was scared myself first time I rode in the back of a helicopter. Most of them, I'd say 90% of them, they're all right by the second or third flight. It takes that long. The other 10%, well, they just grit their teeth and learn to live with it. Okay, we uh, all full. Uh, Roger, sir, we're full and everybody's strapped in. Okay, and we're going up the drill. <laughs> all right. Now. Okay, that's good. Okay, sir, come up slowly. You can look out for wires, okay? And we're at 100%. All right, Roger. Okay, we're going to be going down the valley. Be clear of me, right? Okay, All right, cut through these trees here. Okay. Up. Flying in the low environment requires special skills, since these helicopters fly at treetop level, or even lower. All right, let's get low. At up to 150 knots, mostly at night. They do this to minimize vulnerability and maximize surprise. I'm glad I had a little bit of breakfast this morning. Flying in groups of five, each helicopter carries a dozen fighting men. Okay, come on left. Instead of staying in single file, which would give enemy snipers five chances to hit one, they fly side by side, spread out in separate channels, grazing the treetops, dipping into open spaces, following the contours of the landscape immediately ahead. Okay, leads come this way. Got him. Keep your eye on two. Got him. Okay, guys. Three. Got it. Watch his work. Okay, coming up and over. Okay. Now, clear. You're clear. Well, when you're actually flying in the cockpit and when you're going 150 knots, your perceptual vision and your view straight ahead is so intense on what you're doing, it's right ahead of you. Your concentration level is so high and the adrenaline is pumping so fast that uh, your body works just on its own. It works on instinct. And of course, you've always got to check inside your aircraft too. You've got to keep the cross check going inside to make sure your instruments are running properly and it's back outside again. And it all happens in, in the space of several seconds. It's, it's such a rush when you, when you look ahead and you instinctively know where everyone else in the flight's going to be. And, and you know that when that, that tree comes up, uh, you know by instinct that you'll be able to clear that tree with plenty of room and, and just dive down into that valley, continue to march, and, uh, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> and we can get burnt out pretty quick. You're clear out left. OK, coming back in. Coming right. Up down the cornfield. Everybody else in the trees. Got him. I feel a great deal of sympathy for the men in the back of my aircraft because I've been there. I know what it's like, temperatures in the low 40s. I know that you're going to be out there for five or 10 days. I understand what they're going through. So if I can make sure that I put them down in the right spot, you know, I'll, I'll get them as close as I can. Hey, Rogers, you're the one five. Mark LZ was small. We've got, what, five birds coming in with infantry loaded on board? Five. Yeah, fine. He's gonna do a smoke. I'll pop smoke. Okay, let him out. Let's go. We're good to go, John. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, um, everybody got a little bit out of training today, right? Yes, Sergeant. Yes. Okay, good. Any questions? No, no, no sir. Tone, tense, pull. Get my love, Sergeant. Right, keys. Forward, push. Hop, hop, herb, hop, hop, herb, A day of training done. Troops marching home. Many of them looking forward to a quiet evening with their families. The money's tight, they'd say, although the lifestyle isn't bad. But their daily routine is about to be interrupted by a test that's been eight months in the planning. 
an emergency deployment readiness exercise, an EDRI. This isn't the first time the 101st has gone through an EDRI, and it won't be the last. This particular EDRI has been designed to see if 1,200 soldiers from the 101st can pack up everything they need for a counterinsurgency action in a jungle setting weapons, equipment, supplies, even rations, and leave their post no later than 18 hours after the alert begins. It's not meant to test the fighting ability of these troops. That's being tested all the time. It's meant to test their readiness. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hi. I've got a alert notification for you for an exercise, Idri. I hope you're 5.30 p.m. It begins at command headquarters. Don't get too comfortable. This is Captain Miley, 101st Staff Duty Officer. Stand by. Message follows. Line one, execution order. Line two, emergency deployment readiness exercise. I'm um, serious. The EDRI, of course, is an emergency deployment readiness exercise. And uh, our job is to be prepared to go to war whenever we're called on it. So the value of the EDRI is really many-fold. But first of all, to receive a notification that you're going somewhere and you're not expecting it. Let's go. Y'all be over behind the order room, man. Let's go. You ain't got time for all these boots and nothing. C26 Engineers, this PSC Air Assist Battalion Staff Duty Runner. I've just been notified as alert. We have N plus 15 minutes. Alpha come to further the plan. This is Special Dice of Staff Duty NCO Runner. Uh, we've been notified there is an alert. Uh, you have N plus 15 minutes. It is now N plus 17 minutes. Okay, hold on, let me get it. Hello. The soldiers of this organization are scattered uh, probably over an area of 50 square miles. Uh, in the barracks, off post, some of them are probably in bars, whatever. What, now? So the first challenge is to contact them and say, come in. How'd you know I needed some help? Many times, they're not even told the whole story right then. Because uh, either we don't know or because of security reasons, we can't tell them right now. Well, then we'll go through the back door. Front. Go through the front door, wait in the back. OK, go ahead and just start about right here. Excuse me, sir. I'm Major Hankel, Chief of Your Operations. The purpose of tonight's briefing is to provide specific guidance on Op Plan 2-82 and Exercise capable eagle. The mission of Task Force 1st, the 506 Infantry, is to deploy to the country of Ural and via uh, United States military aircraft and to conduct an air assault mission to secure Remagen DZ vicinity grid Mike Foxtrot 242515. Enemy situation at this time is there's been a, a significant uh, uh, guerrilla activities in the area that we'll be deploying to. Presently, they have been had two uh, sightings of small guerrilla teams at grid coordinates 349 or 434 and 282 they got They're dropping mortars jeeps and they're dropping uh, some of the evaluators jeeps. They're not dropping our jeeps. Okay. We will return. In the future, I can't in tell you when. In the future. I don't know exactly when. I don't want to. Don't want to get your hopes up. When you put the steel helmets on, make sure you always have to have the chin strap snapped. Restrap. Yeah, hey, you need to redo the other side. Seven forty-five p.m. The helicopter dismantling begins. Since the helicopters of the 101st go into combat areas aboard transport planes, their blades must be folded, because no plane in the world is large enough to hold a helicopter with its blades fully extended. We're folding it in. You got a nut. You got to folding there. By the book, it takes four hours to strip down a Blackhawk so that it will fit into a C-141. And even then. There's only one inch of clearance, top and bottom. This dismantling is demanding, and mistakes can't be tolerated, since a mistake could destroy a helicopter and kill its occupants. Their job is to break down the aircraft as, as fast as they can, and it isn't until you, you 
stand there and, and supervise what they're doing, that you really appreciate the technical skill that each one of these soldiers possesses. Uh, they know exactly what they're doing. They've practiced it many, many, many times. They do the job, so it's almost automatic. Uh, there's a certain amount of pride in being able to do it faster and break your own record. Red one next. Three tent poles. All right. Long John. Sleeping bag. Lowering line, attaching straps, your H harness. You got everything? Where are we going, sir? We won't know until we get in the aircraft. This goes your component bag, goes your battery, VS-17. Lieutenant Omendinger, Pathfinder, platoon leader. One of only 125 such men in the 101st. Lowering line, did you get a machete? An elite unit, respected by infantry and pilots alike. They're packing everything they need. Their assignment, to parachute into an unprotected area, often by night, carrying all their equipment. Their responsibility, to secure and mark that area for incoming air assault infantry, to stay in that area while the troops perform their mission, and until all the men and all the helicopters have left safely. Their motto, first in, last out. Do I mean Looking forward to a little break, a little vacation down there in the swamplands, water moccasins and mosquitoes that are as big as house flies. Right? Okay. Yes, Eric Shaw. See you later. 11.30 p.m. The men are all packed. They must sleep now, or they'll get no sleep for at least the next 24 hours. Well, for an experienced crew, uh, this job should take four hours per bird, per aircraft. And with our, our teardown crew, the four aircraft that they did, uh, they just did an outstanding job because it only took seven and a half hours to tear down four birds, which should have taken 16, and to do the job right. And that is just unbelievable as far as I'm concerned. Heavy. Make a vigorous exit by pushing out vigorously, keeping your feet uh, straight out. Keep your chin down, your eyes open, elbows tight in your side, fingers spread, joint of ends, reserves, feet and knees bent. Bend forward slightly at the waist and count 6,000. There will be no talking while you're in the nearest tactical situation. The only time anything will be said is if you're going to collide with a fellow jumper. You see that you cannot avoid a collision, get into a spread equal position thus enabling you to bounce off the canopy or the suspension lines. If you see that you're going into the suspension lines, try to get your way out. If you cannot get out of the suspension lines, crawl down to the lower jumper using the hand-under-hand -hand method until you get even with the jumper, grabbing him by his main lift web, and both of you discuss which type of PLF you're going to do. Remember not to do a front PLF. Last one. Five, nine, seven. Last seven, 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 two. Five, five, nine, seven. Charlie, come. First five or six. Five or six, right over there. Last name. Tooks, T O O K S. Lufa. 3 p.m. Before each soldier leaves, he must have his personal records in order his shots, his medical information, his dog tags, his next of kin, his will. Same thing with you. I don't have one on you. What will? I don't have a form, too. Okay, I need you to check all the information on here, making sure it's correct. Okay. SGI bylaw. Okay, and that means goes to goes to your wife, okay, law, children, right. okay. parents. Okay. Right, well, so in that order. Close to throat. Okay. Does this hurt? A lot. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Dang! Dang! Come on, man. Relax. Turn your head the other way. Relax, don't move from this. That's it. Just in case you step on the nail or something like that. Okay. Exit stage left. Good, thank you. Oh, 
painless, wasn't it? I do, I do. It's kind of like uh, parking a Greyhound bus in a one-car garage. You know, of course, you got the time factor to deal with, and the evaluators are watching us over here, but uh, it's not like we haven't done it before. We're getting better all the time, but it's just never easy. We, we only got about probably an inch and a half over here. Yeah, I know, but this was set right on me. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good, that's good. We just got to go real slow with it. Hey, just let me know which way I got to go. Yeah, a little bit. Once I get past this ramp, I'll be ready. Yeah, we ready. Hold it! 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 Next. Okay, how many uh, seats available? 96. 96. They deleted uh, quite a few people. They added um, people. So we got to uh, make sure we're straight on that. Boarding will be slow because you have your large rucksacks and your weapon. So just be patient in line and stay together as a group and have a good flight. Okay, so if you'll follow me, we'll move on out. Certainly, we understand that not everyone is cut out to be in the military. We wouldn't expect everybody to. The only thing that, that I hope is that we can conduct ourselves in such a manner, in such a professional manner, that the American public, whether they agree with armies or deterrent or anything else, will be able to understand that if the national command authorities decide today to commit U.S. forces to any part of the world. The soldiers and the officers and the non-commissioned officers of this division could go anywhere and could perform in a manner that uh, would uh, make any adversary stop and take notice. You know, maybe it doesn't make them afraid of us, but certainly I think it makes them stop and think to make a conscious decision. Do we want to take on U.S. forces? Departing now. 